Hey everyone, thanks very much for joining our Monday Mindshare this week. Actually, at the time of the recording, 2021, here it's in uh, August, almost September. We've got UTMB running this weekend in France, the big Wimbledon of Ultra Trail uh, running happening. And we also have the uh, Collins Cup in the triathlon scene also running. So a big weekend for racing. You know, one of the questions we get coming in through our support uh, at S-Fuels is, athletes that uh, run into the bonking or hitting the wall or basically collapsing during their race and when we dig into the numbers with these athletes we we see a very consistent thread and a theme forming and i wanted to share a little bit about the numbers of why we're seeing some of these athletes uh, collapsing uh, into the race and um, this obviously happens at different times because of different intensities and durations and uh, the nature of the weather of the day but I do specifically want to look a little bit at uh, some co common threads that are coming out as we uh, see this in these athletes coming to us asking for support. So let me show, uh, share with you now some uh, material. This happens to everyone. Um, since it's UTMB week and I thought I'd uh, just share with you, uh, I know in uh, 2016 at about, um, 125 kilometers into UTMB, I certainly uh, was in this state. And this was certainly before we had really developed our product portfolio uh, here at S-Fuels. And uh, I was, uh, you would say, minimally fat adapted at the time. And uh, I hit a, a really down point at, um, at that particular uh, part of the race. And it happens to everyone. It's part of uh, experience and uh, learning to uh, survive these races and uh, finish them strong. Well, let me show you some numbers of an athlete recently that was talking to us and they came to us um, highlighting exactly this, that in a 70.3, I commonly get to around three to four hours into the race. And for that particular athlete, that's when things start to go uh, south. Either I hit the wall, I'm just totally out of gas and I have to stumble through the rest of the race or finish or I try to uh, deal with this by taking on a lot of carbohydrate and only to come down with uh, gut problems, et cetera. Um, I started digging in with this athlete and a number of these athletes, um, some of their numbers and particularly looking at their fat oxidation. And the numbers I'm using here is coming from one athlete, but as I said, very consistent thread that we're seeing across athletes and this can be dramatically improved and changed and i'll show you that on the next slide but this particular athlete at zone two which you know more often used as an aerobic training zone uh, they were burning about 0.8 grams per minute and when i asked the question about their fat oxidation um, uh, numbers this was the number they gave me they failed to mention that it was zone two. They just said 0.8 grams per minute. And it was only on further questioning, I found out it was in zone two. And there was almost a hesitancy to give me the rest of the numbers um, because you can see the dramatic drop off on the left here. As we go to zone three, it went to you know less than a half a gram per minute, which is really not that efficient fat oxidation. And of course, this would have even gone lower uh, zone four and zone five. Um, if you were to race and do the whole race in zone two, you could get away with not having to take much carbohydrate. Um, but in reality, his, his same numbers on a recent race that this particular athlete did on the right-hand side in terms of how much time of the whole race they spent in the different zones. And for this particular athlete, it was a six and a half hour finish. So, you know, it's, it's okay um, in terms of performance, but not great. And by the way, this athlete had really quite an amazing VO2 max, like a really high VO2 max. And um, it just goes to show that VO2 max alone is not what you need to, uh, not only what you need, I should say, to finish strong in these endurance races. But you can see here, if you add the pink in zone four to the blue, in uh, zone three, you're getting 80% of this race is done above zone two. And for this athlete, like on the left, we're saying here that at best, they're burning 0.4 grams of fat per minute. And they're doing that for 
only 20% of the race, uh, sorry, for uh, 80% of the race. And so what this means is when you look at how much carbohydrate then this athlete needs, either on board as stored glycogen in the liver or in the muscle, um, or they're going to take it in in the way of food and drink, it turns out that they will need somewhere around 470 to 500 um, uh, calories per hour uh, from carbohydrate. So you divide that by four, you're now four, uh, sorry, 100 to 125 grams of carbohydrate per hour. And that is a tremendous amount. And like uh, the, was the case for this particular athlete, uh, a few things here is, you know, they tried to go into a race and do this as a low carb, uh, high fat athlete, and they got a few hours in and fail because their efficiency just wasn't there. And this particular athlete spoke to us about, hey, they'd really only started trying to transition three weeks before the race, which is not good advice. And I would not advise it on anyone. Um, but you can see here as they needed that much carbohydrate, it only is... Um, uh obvious that you're going to get so many hours into the race about halfway into the race and suddenly you're going to be out of gas or you have to be pounding that carbohydrate so hard that you'll end up in uh, gut distress so um what's possible but if you are to begin to transition and drive efficiency in fat oxidation what is possible well here's another athlete back in 2018 this particular athlete didn't have that much different fat oxidation efficiency than the last athlete in the last slide I showed you. They were had a, a fat max score of uh, 0.52, and that um, fat max score was uh, or measurement was uh, happening at 135 watts on the bike. Well, a year later, and we'll sh we'll share with you in a second what uh, this athlete uh, did, and frankly, it's what um, almost all of our athletes do as they make this transition. Uh, they almost doubled their fat oxidation efficiency to 0.9 and they could do that at much higher intensity 240 watts and then in 2021 when this particular athlete broke two ironman uh, one one ironman record in new zealand and another ironman 70.3 record in australia they could push 310 watts while burning 1.8 grams per minute and when you look at that type of efficiency, which is, that is really one of the highest we've actually ever seen, 1.8 grams per minute, um, you know, you, you really don't need much carbohydrate at all. And it comes down to just what level of uh, intensity you intend to finish the run in the case of half Ironman or Ironman. So what did uh, the particular athlete do? Well, there's really two things that he would refer to one is part of that transition required him to really shift a number of training sessions to long slow distance and doing those uh, in a very low carb state in fact um, and i'm not advising this but his particular coach had him doing you know six to eight hour rides at times and those rides were done in almost a fasted state and again, I'm not advocating that everyone has a coach, but you can see the extent you can go to in order to really shift the metabolism from, you know, drawing into the well of carb and shifting that to be able to draw deeply into the well of fats that you have on board. And this was from a training perspective, what was done. Parallel to that, this athlete shifted their diet dramatically across from a more typical, you know, high carb, high starch based uh, diet that athletes are on and shifted that to a, you know, much more low carb, think of, you know, 50 to 100 grams per day maximum of carbohydrate. And uh, he did a lot of that uh, with, with us and uh, at S Fuels. And that is all about tuning every day that your enzymes associated with an improved fat oxidation metabolism can be improved as you increase the amount of fat and you reduce the dependency on, on carbohydrate. So um, we've just released our latest uh, life guide and uh, it's uh, attempting to simplify that whole process of pulling meals together for breakfast, lunch, dinner, for snacks and drinks and make it simple so that you can then shift that metabolism from a you know, high carb centric diet to a low carb centric diet 
And you can do that really simply. Uh, a bunch of recipes, like 30, 35 recipes there to, um, to take. Some of these take like 60 seconds, two minutes. Some of them take a little longer, uh, but it'll help you just really make that transition really quite effortlessly. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for joining our Monday Mindshare. Delve into the numbers yourself. See what it means to you and uh, take a look at that life guide. And I wish you all the very best in training. Be well, be safe and go longer. Thanks very much. Ciao.